Welcome to The Jameson Files. I'm Carrie Weber, and I'm so glad that you're joining us today for another episode. If you're a part of our Jameson Files community, thank you so much for staying connected with us and listening and subscribing wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. If you're new to The Jameson Files, I invite you to find us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe or watch us on the Jameson YouTube channel or right here where we're live streaming on the Jameson Facebook page. I'm excited to be with my teammate and friend, Drew Halverson, the Chief of Advisor Development here at Jameson. And Drew gets the opportunity to join me on some Jameson Files podcasts from time to time. Mm -hmm, so definitely. I appreciate you being with me again. Thank you. You are welcome. So thank you so much for having me. You know, what I wanted to talk about today is something that we haven't really started diving into in the podcast. And I know that it is a top area of concern or opportunity. Um, a lot of doctors that I talk to day in and day out, uh, a big goal for them is how do they improve the hygiene aspect of their practices. Um, and typically what I mean by that is not necessarily the actual care that's being provided. We it, know that they're going to give good care. Right, right. It's more about how do we do this more effectively, more efficiently? Mm -hmm. How do we become more productive in the hygiene department? departments of our practices? Um, how do we engage our hygiene team at another level to help us with the overall patient's experience and relationship with us? So I wanted you to come and join me today so that we could talk about high-performing hygiene, what that means in general terms, but also how can we take our practices from being good in the hygiene realm to being great? So Drew, you know, we, when we were talking about this before recording, we there are so many directions we could go here. Um, and I, what, something that I want to start with is exactly what you asked me was when doctors, when practices share that they want to improve in hygiene. Mm -hmm. So what are some questions that you ask practices when, when they when they share that as a goal, mm -hmm. um, that they want to be to go from right. good to great in hygiene? What are some questions that you ask to really start getting them to see where the opportunities are? Well, I want to know, you know, what do what are the weaknesses and what are the strengths that they see in their hygiene department? And I can always get a lot of strengths and I can always get some really good weaknesses mm. from that question alone. So if you can draw a line down the middle of a page and put strengths on one side and weaknesses right. on another or opportunities that you see, then you can have a really good list of what to work on and what to pat yourself on the back about. So that yeah. makes a big difference. I always want to know um, how patients feel at the end of the appointment. Mm. Are, are they checking in with their patients? Are they always asking the patients how was the appointment? Um, also, if they continue to stay with you and they return on a regular basis, they right. don't become past due. Right. They stay current and then they love coming to the practice for their hygiene appointments. That is a good question to ask. Mm -hmm. What is the retention? How many patients are past due? And then also, I like to know treatment acceptance mm -hmm. from not only the restorative care, but also the hygiene care. Mm. What is treatment acceptance? And is it where you want it? Mm -hmm. Is it high enough? And if it isn't, what's causing that? Problem. I love the recommendation of starting from where are you right now in terms of where do you find mm -hmm. yourself to be strong? Where do you find yourself needing to work on things? Um, I think really high performing teams start to, to reveal themselves or, or, or rise to the top because they have this openness mm -hmm. to not only give themselves pats on the back of all the great right. things that they're doing, but they're comfortable with being uncomfortable, meaning mm -hmm. they're not afraid to talk about, be vulnerable in the areas that they right. need to work. And the, right. the doctors, the leaders, but also mm -hmm. the hygienists, the clinical team well, themselves, you know, all, the more open yeah, we are. The, we've all been to school. We've yeah. all tried really hard to be great hygienists and doctors. Right. However, that doesn't mean that we're perfect. And sometimes when that perfectionist 
um, piece yeah. of hygienist and dentist kick in or team members kick in, it's sometimes hard to be able to accept, maybe I could improve, yes. maybe I could do better. Maybe I could do something else to elevate my care of the patient and mm -hmm. then the care of the practice. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. You know, it's a conversation that I'm having quite a bit recently is that team members that have been on a team or have been practicing dentistry, have been in dentistry for many, many years, and that there's a, there's a sense of resistance to mm -hmm. change or resistance to changing the way we do something or improving uh, mo more I think because of a discomfort of breaking out of what has become a habit mm -hmm. and so do you see a way in that exercise to really open people up to see not only how we as a team could improve but how we as individuals could change what we maybe have done for many years for the better. How do we open up our mindsets to, to I love, listen for that? I love just to bring it to their attention. Bring mm -hmm. it to their attention. When you're speaking about your care, you have been saying, I have done it this way. Mm -hmm. I have done it this way for 20 years. I have, done, I have done it this way successfully in the past. That's great to hold on to. That is wonderful to hold on to. But today's a new day <laughs> and things always change and yeah. can be improved. So I, I really like to start talking about those things that I see in the practice. Yes. Um, I, oh, I've never done it that way. I always do it this way. I, 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 I feel like blah, blah, blah. So that is a conversation that tells, that should tell an mm. owner, a dentist, that the team is not all on one page. Mm. They have to be all on one page. They must have the same philosophy and the same work schedule flow with every patient that they see. If it's different from one provider to another, it confuses the patient. Mm -hmm. And a confused patient can't make a decision. Yeah, that's great. So when we think about hygiene in general, going from good to great, some areas that you see perhaps on the regular mm -hmm. that there's all, when, when we start to do some work here, there's always a huge leap of improvement in the overall right. performance of right. the practice and relationship with the patients. Mm -hmm. What are a couple of those that you see? The first one, and you know, when you asked me to, ha to have a couple of topics in my head, I, that first one is always the doctor hygiene evaluation. Okay. And you're gonna know that we're not gonna be talking about how you do the clinical techniques. It's the communication, it's the body language, it's the tone of voice that mm -hmm. you have when you do that doctor hygiene evaluation. In practices that don't see high treatment acceptance mm -hmm. or high hygiene treatment acceptance or don't have patients that stay forever or mm -hmm. don't stay active and current in hygiene retention, it goes back to that doctor hygiene evaluation time. Hmm. Every patient has to see that you are a team that works with the patient. You have to be in sync together and you have to have a system or a flow that feels really natural. Right. It can't feel like a system or it can't feel practiced. And that system has to be done with every doctor in the practice yes. and every hygienist in the practice. Yeah, and something that I, you know, I've learned so much from you over time and, and the clients that we've worked with together, something mm -hmm. that I hear you working very fervently <laughs> for for the lot of people is the timing of that evaluation. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's, there's some sweet spots in terms of when that ideally takes place that we need to be striving more intentionally mm -hmm. on a regular basis mm -hmm. to accomplish. We really like it more in the middle of the appointment. Why is that? Well, at the beginning of the appointment, the hygienist is gonna be gathering all the information, reviewing the health history, getting the blood pressure, doing all of the things that we need to do initially, mm -hmm. necessary diagnostic radiographs, perio charting, charting of existing and potentially needed mm -hmm. treatment, so we can get our documentation in order before the doctor comes into the room. Right. We also don't want it in the last 
20 minutes. So I'm going to assume that the appointment is an hour of time for an adult. The first 20 minutes is for social graces, getting to know the patient, um, getting their chief complaint from them, and getting all the diagnostic information. The second 20 minutes is the time, the sweet spot, as you said, yeah. for the doctor to come in to do the evaluation. If you wait until the last 20 minutes of the appointment, the patient's done. They are ready to go. Mm -hmm. they, are, they have their mind thinking about work, picking up the children, going on, their, on with their day, mm -hmm. and they're not focused on what they need to hear. And so that sweet spot is that second 20 mm -hmm. minutes of time. So not only how we execute that evaluation in terms of how we're communicating with each other and with the patient mm -hmm. and what we're striving to accomplish in that relationship with them at that time, but also in when we execute that is, is really important and something to be aware of. So looking at your schedule and, and being a little more aware in the coming days of when those evaluations tend to be happening, is it really chaotic? Is it all over the place? Is it really more of an in and out, on with your life? No real intention put into the impact that that time with the patient can really have on their overall sense of value and need for your ongoing care for them. Um, and then also when we do that so that we make sure that it runs as smoothly like you had said earlier, the more consistent across all providers we can be, right. the better it is ultimately for the patient. And when it's better for the patient, it, it easily turns into being better for the practice. Mm -hmm. So looking at your evaluations, how are we being intentional and in how we're executing those and how we're communicating during them? But then also what else, Drew? What are some other areas that may be well, keeping I'd them like from to, being great? I'd like to wrap up just one sure. thing. Make sure at huddle, at your daily huddle, that you look at your schedule, doctors and hygienists, and you look to see when should the evaluations happen and where. Where mm -hmm. should So really look at the flow of your whole day yeah. through the schedule so that you can do a great, effective mm. doctor yeah. hygiene evaluation. And your evaluation evaluation needs to be approximately five to seven minutes, seven minutes to 10 minutes. It depends on mm -hmm. you know, the type of patient that you have in your, in your chair. I understand that. It needs to be very intentional. And also in the body language, tone of voice, they need to be um, very serious, but yet comfortable for the patient. Mm -hmm. So sitting down with the patient eye to eye, knee to knee being in a communication triangle with the patient so that they can see the two of you, the doctor and hygienist, conversing about them, mm -hmm. the patient. And that makes a difference, a big difference in mm -hmm. the value, adding value yes. to that appointment and then also to the next treatment as well. Mm -hmm. So I've alluded to the second one, which is scheduling correctly. Yeah. The schedule for the hygienist has to be correct and it has to meld with the doctor and assistant mm -hmm. schedule as well. Mm -hmm. So there aren't too many evaluations in a day and there aren't too few in a day. Mm -hmm. The other thing in the schedule is if you don't schedule to the scheduling essentials that we teach with at Jameson, yes. and it's in the it's in our grow platform. Yes. If you are not following those essentials then in the doctor and assistant chairs and in the hygiene chairs, you're not going to be able to get through a day mm. in an even good flow and feel good at the end of the day. And also it will affect your productivity. Mm. You know, this just goes to show how much really goes into having a great 
we're bringing excellence to the hygiene aspect of your practice. It's really, we, we, you may come into it thinking, uh, you know, it's all about one thing, but really there's so much about different aspects of your practice from s business systems and hygiene systems mm -hmm. that really build upon each other for you to get the success you're looking for from how we're communicating with the patients and when we're timing those evaluations, the way we're involving them in that evaluation time, our body language and the way we're engaging in that conversation, mm -hmm. to how we're preparing for that conversation in our daily huddles, in how you're scheduling. I mean, so many pieces that it may be that you need to, if you're listening to this, taking a, to take a step back and really look at all of the aspects of those integral systems of your practice that could be having an impact, good or bad, right. on the productivity of your hygiene. Mm -hmm. So that all leads to a final tip, I would say, you know, a big piece that really marries all of it together that we had talked about, and that's communication skills. That is. What do you see in, the, in that side of things of helping people become better in, in the hygiene aspect? Well, I can tell you that when I graduated from hygiene school and I started working with Dr. John Jameson in his dental practice and we started working on our communication skills, it was mind-boggling to me mm -hmm. how much there is a difference between average communication skills, getting the job done, mm -hmm. and then excelling in your communication skills and really getting those patients to value the appointment. And so the communication skills start immediately with your introduction to the patient and all the way through what you're doing, utilizing the correct wording, phrases, or I, I don't want to say correct, I want to say the excellent mm -hmm. phrases and mm -hmm. verbal skills. And then knowing how to add value to your appointment. Instead of saying cleaning, mm -hmm. you have your, this is our time for your hygiene care, your professional hygiene care, your preventive hygiene care. Whatever that is that you find more valuable and the patients mm -hmm. seem to raise their eyebrows out and go, wow, what's that? Mm -hmm. That means you're saying something new something valuable and they see value in it and yes. they will then listen to you at a different level. Yes. One also what I learned way back when we first started was I was lecturing to my patients. Mm. I was talking down to my adult patients and if you're young it's also if you're mature it is difficult for an adult to listen to another adult lecture them. Mm. And so it had to become an investigation. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how mm. do you feel about, how are you doing with, yes. and then getting their permission to teach them a different way or to talk to them. So can I speak to you or can I show you? Mm -hmm. Can can we do this? Can we look at this together? Mm -hmm. Those are items that I learned a long time ago that really make a difference when you're speaking to a patient about their care at home, their care that needs to be done in the office, the restorative care, mm -hmm. the hygiene care, and it helps so much. Mm -hmm. But until you really listen to yourself and you hear yourself, then you don't understand how that feels. So put yourself in the patient's spot. Yes. And pay attention to what they are receiving. I think it's a great way to start change. Have everybody sit in the chair. Have everybody go through an appointment and see what could be elevated. Yes. How can you get them to say yes? Um, communication, there's one more thing that needs to be done always, and that's photography. Mm -hmm. A picture's worth a thousand words. Yes. So that is communication with the patient. It's quick and it's easy and they see it and they understand. Mm. I, I think it, that all just so perfectly paints 
what you even said at the very beginning of the question of where are you strong? Where do you need to work? Opening up your eyes and your mind and opening up a higher level of awareness of how are we communicating mm -hmm. with our patients yeah. from the business team on that first telephone call mm -hmm. to the hygiene team when you're preparing a patient to check out. Mm -hmm. There are so many pivotal pieces and points, touch points where you can make a difference mm -hmm. and build that value for ongoing care. And it's a matter of us becoming more aware. You may not know how to do it better yet, but the first step is being aware of where you could exactly. be better. And so as you... And accepting that. Yes. Accepting it, being open to it, mm -hmm. and having a readiness and a willingness yes, to definitely. change. Mm -hmm. And so my hope is if, if you're listening to this, and this is your opportunity, whether you're a, the doctor, whether you're a hygienist, clinical assistant, a business team member, mm -hmm. whatever your role in the practice is, go back <laughs> into the office, you know, get back in the get back into things today and start to have a heightened level of awareness of the conversations you're having with the patients. Yes, definitely. What you were saying, the questions you're asking, are we getting permission from them to continue mm -hmm. and to share and to educate and build yeah. leveling up, building up those skills. Um, just identifying where you could be better is going to put you on the path of improvement. Uh, we n none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect communicators, uh, but there are some that are more aware of and recognize the need to be continuously working on that. And that's what we want. That's the seed we want to plant for you today. So Drew, asking the themselves, where are our needs? Where are we strong? Let's celebrate that. Where mm -hmm. could we be better than working on making sure we're really um, driving at home on having an effective doctor hygiene, hygienist evaluation, mm -hmm. timing that Most well, definitely. executing that well, mm -hmm. making sure our schedule supports that intention mm -hmm. so that we are bringing the best for every patient's experience with us. And then that we're continuously working as a team on our communication skills mm -hmm. to help you get closer to your vision of what ideal is in hygiene, but in the practice as a whole. Anything else that you would want to drive home today? Just remember, it's small steps. Small step changes make a big difference There's in the long run. There's and a you great don't have to go, go back to work and say, okay, everybody, we're changing everything up today. Yes. Small changes. There's a great book, James Clear, Atomic Habits. We mm -hmm. both read it. And I mean, that's really the theme of that book is that really long-term success comes mm -hmm. from adding small disciplines and building upon small yeah. disciplines and changes over time. So don't beat yourself up if you're not there yet, uh, but make a commitment, just as Drew said, to start making those tiny steps of progress and improvement that are going in the right direction for where you want to go. So Drew, thank you for your thank time you for today. Me. Thank I you for enjoyed it so much. Me. If you have questions for Drew or for me, please reach out to us. If you have other subjects you want us to tackle on a, a future Jamison Files episode, let us know. Contact us um, at info at jmsn.com and we will make sure that we are building content and teaching that's what you're looking for. That's what we ultimately want to have happen right here in the Jamison Files community. And as Drew mentioned, if you're needing to explore ways to improve your scheduling systems, your communication skills, or work as a team to refine those overall skills and systems in your practice, go find us on the Grow platform at grow.jmsn.com. Thanks for joining us. Be well. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Jameson Files. Visit us online at jmsn.com. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play Music, or Spotify. Do you have questions or topics you'd like for us to answer or cover on the next podcast? Email us at podcast at jmsn.com.